Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we'll be building the transponder, or as the cool kids call it, the expander. For this build, you'll need an Arduino Mega. I have it attached to this breakout board, which is Bob for short. <laughs> you'll also need some window tint. This comes from cars. You put it on like your headlights to be all cool and trendy. You'll also need these 3D printed parts. This part in particular, I did on a multicolor printer, uh, but you can also print it all in black and then use a paint pen and just go over the top in white. You'll need four M3 heat set inserts. Mine are four millimeters tall. You'll need this circuit board I have on my web shop. You'll need these male pin headers and this 30 pin IDC connector. You can also just substitute this with male pin headers if you want. Uh, you'll need an RS16 five position switch. You'll need these LED micro switches. Uh, You'll need 11 of them. I just have four because I haven't gotten to that episode of Elmo yet. Um, five's up next. I'm excited for that. You'll need 47 ohm resistors, uh, six M3 10 millimeter screws, and four M3, I think, 15 millimeter screws. These ones are just to install into the radio stack. All right, let's get started. So, first step is to solder everything to your PCB. Now, the way you solder it is by with a soldering iron. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like to mess with everyone. I'm gonna start out with the resistors because they're the shortest components. Once you have the resistors, the next thing to do is the buttons. Now these buttons are pretty cool. They have an integrated LED inside of them. Now the way they work is just there's a button and there's an LED. Yeah. <laughs> the longest pin you'll see is the LED positive. Now you can remember that if you are positive, you will live longer. Is that actually true though? We're gonna pretend it is. Now on the circuit board, there's this little tiny plus and that's for positive. So the long end should go into positive. Now, if you're not confident, you can get five volts. Uh, you can also draw 5 volts directly from your Arduino. Um, and you can go onto the back and see external backlight. Put positive to V plus and ground to V... Oh, it's just ground. And now we see that it works. Hurrah! You can also leave it on for a little. Make sure your LED calculations are good. Um, because it'll be easier to replace the switches and LEDs now than it will be after. All right, now we can solder them. Oh, but this isn't it solder. <laughs> we. Now the last thing on this side is the rotary switch. There's the one pin in the middle that'll go to the one pin right here. Just place it down. For some reason, this reminds me of the robot from Incredibles. All right, now for the other side. Oh, that is not a good idea. <laughs> the other side comprises of just the headers. So these two are the external backlights. Uh, these three are also the backlights, and you can select if you want to have internal or external through this. Then we have the IDC connector. Are they all the same height? They're all about the same height. Now this IDC connector has this little clip out of it and that key will align with the little bump right here on this key. Isn't that so sweet? So it just goes in like so. Oops. 
You can also use helping hands, but I don't know why I don't. They're, they're right there. Our last step is this circuit board right here. What I'll do is use the long end of the pin headers, put that through, put the seven segment display through, and then solder this on. Now what you can do is you can come in with your side snips and then just lift this plastic part off. That'll expose the bare pins and then you can get soldering. Just make sure all the holes roughly line up. Now you have all the electronics intact, um, hopefully. <laughs> now let's go on to the fun part, which is assembling it all. I guess that was the fun part, at least for me. Now, you can use this circuit board as a reference. Um, IDT goes in the top left corner. It's kind of like a puzzle. Aha! Ta-da! Zero goes after IDT. One goes after zero. Two goes after one. Three go. Okay, I think you get the picture. That's my assumption, at least. <laughs> I almost went out of order. That would have been crazy. I almost got them all right side up. Now with this part, this these are the heat set inserts. What I do is I get my pliers, then I get my soldering iron, I put the soldering iron onto the heat set insert, place it in, and then use the pliers to kind of make sure that it stays in while I lift it up. You can also get special heat set insert tips for your soldering iron, and those will work a lot better. Um, but I don't like to change between them. It brings me down, man. <laughs> I'll demonstrate right here. Pick it up, put it over, heat it up, drop it down, pull it back up. That is a step that we've completed for this, which is actually what we want to do now. Um, you see this L and R? That stands for Leonard and Romeldo. Um, which should go, uh, Leonard is right, and no, it's left and right. <laughs> You're so funny, Trevor. So, yeah, from this view, L should be left, R should be right, and you can just place that in. One other thing you want to do is to make sure that, uh, you put your fancy stuff over it. For this window tint, you can just cut a sheet. A little bit bigger than it and then fold it down into the this, these little grooves like that so it'll stick down now L is left R is right Leonard and Romaldo room room whatever then you can put it down and this is a part of the expender sandwich so we have the, the bread the other bread and the piece of moldy mozzarella cheese it always goes moldy. Make sure to remove this nut. So, who's ready to have the best sandwich of their life? Now, we have a uh, expender. Or is it expen doctor? Now, we have a few screws. And this makes up the sandwich. We have the heat set insert right here, which will also go onto the, um, I guess, this uh, would be the equivalent of the cute little um, thing they put on the top of the sandwich, the like umbrella. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. Uh, this will go right here, and then there'll be a screw. But notice that pieces are sticking up. You can't have a spiky sandwich that doesn't work. So we're just gonna snip them off. Snip, 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 snip. Snip, snip, 
Snip, snip, snip, snip, snip, snip, snippity, snip. That should put us at ease. Now, it fits perfectly. And we can screw it in with our screw image. So these are the M10 screws. Or, <laughs> no, M10 would be like that big. Uh, these are the M3 10 millimeter screws. Whoop. Now I need to do the same snipping for this side. It'll make it so flush, so nice, so elegant. Excellent. Now I can put in this screw. Now I have these four screws. You don't really need all four. Only thing left to do is to add the switch. Now right here you can add this bolt. That, that'll just give you extra strength. But who doesn't want extra strength? Wouldn't you love to be a bodybuilder? Just ripped? That'd be cool, maybe. Unless it's not. Turn the switch all the way to the left, or anti-clockwise. If you use the right hand rule, that means the vector is positive. Now, uh, situate the little indicator on off. That was a confusing sentence. And then make sure that the indicator follows all of your proper positions. And you can crank it down. Now, we have a theoretically functional transponder or expander. This is cool, but how do you make it useful? So there are two ways to mount this. One is you can get rid of these wings. Um, and just mount it directly to your panel. Uh, there's gonna be kind of a really weird cutout, so bear with that, but other th but you can panel mount it. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is the radio stack method. Now you have this piece that looks like this, and it'd be attached to your simulator like so. You can just screw in right here and here. You only need two screws. I did four hole placements so that if you have your radio stack sandwiched in between seams, uh, you can still put it in. Now this radio stack mounting system is designed to let you move things up and down. So if you wanna get rid of one, you can unscrew, get rid of it, move everything else up, and then tighten it back. Um, so you'll probably see a few videos about this in the future, probably only one. It's not like a crazy encyclopedia topic. You need a whole volume of dictionaries for it. Oh, that is very wet water. Now let's move on to the wiring. Now let's move on to, the I'm using the breakout system it has 20 pin connectors, 30 pin connectors, and 40 pin connectors. And so I just use the 30 pin connector into a 30 pin connector. Oh, it's the wrong way. Which is awesome, it doesn't let you install it the wrong way. And now, we're all ready to go. Uh, there's specific Arduino uh, profiles I have for each of these, so you should just be able to load up an Arduino profile um, and go for it. I'm not gonna show you step by step on the configuration. I have a seven segment display video, a button or switch video, and a rotary switch video that I'll link in the description below. If I went step by step on this configuration, it would take quite a while. I woke up at 1 a.m. one day randomly and worked on it until 9 a.m., so yeah. I'm gonna show you how you can download the Arduino configuration I made, then do a super simple transponder yourself, um, and then I'll go and show you how to install the actual transponder code that took me <laughs> so long. <laughs> now, let's open up MobiFlight. So right away, we're going to get a little dialogue. And no, it's not the voices inside your head. Oh, a new firmware is available. So it says, hey, upload this Arduino, yeah? And you say, yeah. And it's having a little trouble because it's a uh, Arduino Mega. Sometimes the chipset is a little weird and you have to tell it what it is. So update firmware and then Arduino Mega 2560. Bada boom, bada bang. This is awkward. There we go. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so we have our MobiFlight Mega right in here, and then we can just click open. In the Cessna 172 section 2, 2-6 folder, you'll find this transponder KT76C. 
it won't be a prototype because I'll publish the video and it'll be like, whoa. And then uh, go into the transponder Moby flight and click this transponder on IDC 30A. Um, that's for the 30 pin connector. Click open and then let's upload the config. Upload. <laughs> And then we can scroll down and see, oh, it has all of these. So it has KT76, IDT, starting on pin 40, through KT76 display. You can use analog pins like digital pins, but you can't use digital pins like analog pins. A square is a rectangle, but a triangle is not a trapezoid. And that all of these pins come from my fancy spreadsheet that can be found in the main readme, but it's a little... Uh, a little chaotic. I'll explain more in my breakout board video. All right, let's click OK now that we uploaded it. And we have an orphan situation. Oh no. So we have this Arduino and we need to connect it to this Arduino. So basically, select your Arduino up here, select your Arduino down here, click assign, and now the Moby Flight is merged together. Now let's click OK. So here's our configuration. Of course there's an update. Why would there not be? For the transponder configuration, it's really easy to get it most of the way. In fact, we can do that right now. You just create a transponder output row. That's not how you spell it. Go to Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, and then select Microsoft for generic, and then try type transponder, and you'll see the transponder code. Sweet, just the first code. Under display, we'll put it into a display module, five, six, seven, eight for the last four digits. And when we press test, all right, I guess when we press run, it gives us our transponder code. Sweet. Now it's super easy to also do the buttons. Uh Oh, that's, that's inappropriate. Uh, so button zero, scan for input, click the button. And then action type, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Same thing, find Microsoft um, to filter it, to filter the options, and then uh, transponder button zero. Now, if you click this zero four times, it'll give you a code zero, 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 zero. One, two, three, four, zero, 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 zero. Now, to get it all the way working is a different story. If we go to my configuration, we'll see some crazy stuff happening. So we have our transponder, we click it off, nothing is showing, click it to standby, and it says standby, or 564, but use your imagination, please. Um, and then it displays the transponder code. Test displays all the test digits. Uh, on displays on with a working ident feature right here, as well as the transponder code. If you press ident, It'll stay on for 18 seconds. Or if you toggle it back off, it keeps flashing. And then out shows you your flight level right here with a space and then your transponder code. I didn't have room to put FL in it like the real one does. And it's pretty obvious it's in out mode because it's in out mode and it's the only one with a number to the left of it. So you'll just have to use your big pilot brain. Microsoft Flight Simulator only gives you what the transponder code is, not what it is while you're typing things in. So I had to Moby Flight rig this up. So basically, if you click like random code, like four, five, three, six, you'll see it has those deaths, uh, those uh, minus signs after it. We even have a working backspace. Sometimes it works too much. It is a little finicky. I'm working on that uh, right now. I actually went through the KT76C operation manual to make sure that all of the modes were properly accounted for. So like when it's off, it, it's off, stuff like that. The clear button works properly. Uh, the VFR button, like when you're typing stuff, VFR will automatically take it to the active. Um, so there's a ton of little tiny details that took a ton of time to implement with that. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Bala, Chris, David, ECD crew, Juan Fortes, Marcelo, Morgan, and Scott for helping keep this project in the air. Thank you for watching, stay spicy, happy transpondering, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.